In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most loving and affectionate Father, as we contemplate the great mystery of the birth of your Son, grant to us the dispositions of the most blessed Virgin Mary, so that we may love him with her heart, and with her dedication and devotion seek your most holy will. We ask this through Christ, our beloved Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. This is when the three wise men arrive and they're seeking out the Christ child. Now they go to Herod, and Herod, after speaking with them, finds out exactly where the newborn king or the Messiah was going to be born, in Bethlehem. He tells them where to go and then tells them to come back. But the troubling phrase, the most horrific phrase, is that after they leave, or when they are gone, the, it says in Scripture that Herod and all of Jerusalem with him were troubled. Now that's a sad statement because they were looking for this Messiah. They didn't want the suffering Messiah. They didn't want the, the, the one who would be a leper because to save them from their sins. They wanted the Messiah at the end of time, the one for whom we all wait and that is the one that would conquer the enemies. They wanted a conqueror. They wanted a king who would destroy Rome and the yoke of Rome, because remember, they were an occupied people. So now they arrive with three gifts. Gold, because he was king, most certainly. Frankincense, because he was God. And myrrh. Now there's a little bit of a difficulty. You think to yourself, why would they bring myrrh? Now, bringing myrrh to a christening is like bringing, oh, a casket to a baptism for the child. It's what you're buried in. It's the ointments and the oils and the herbs that they cover your body in after death. So even at the very beginnings of Christ's life upon this earth, we have direct speech of his death. In other words, we have a movement toward the cross. The very, very beginnings. And this is something we have to understand in all of our lives, is that we have to keep death before them. We have to understand the value of life and put life in proper perspective. We contemplate death. It's a very strange thing to think of the beauty and the glory of God coming among us, being born in a stable of Bethlehem, and yet we think about death at the same time. His cross was always foreshadowed, even when Jesus is taken into the temple and offered to God. There is the mention of his death and how he would die. And so we enter into this wonderful feast day, recognizing that we have these gifts as well. We have the gift of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, we have in his divinity. We receive his body, blood, soul, and divinity, the physical Jesus at every single Mass. We have him dwelling within us for 15 minutes. As long as the species is there, the physical presence of Christ is there. That means his hands are in my hands, his feet are in my feet, his heart is beating inside of my heart, his blood is coursing through my veins. I'm literally looking through his eyes. And this is solely so that we can learn what true love is. The only way we can understand the Eucharist and actually embrace Christ's presence in the Eucharist worthily is at the feet of Mary. You see, Mary carried Jesus in her womb for nine months. She loved him from the moment of that conception, and she brought him forth. She loved him within her very self, and this same love you and I experience every time we receive Holy Communion. We have this God among us, this treasure in all of our tabernacles throughout the world. We have Him among us, physically, so that we are never alone. And Mary is always there as well. Remember, she was assumed into heaven, body and soul, and therefore she's a certain distance from us, for she has a body, a resurrected body. God did not leave us as orphans, and He wouldn't leave Jesus as an orphan. He had a father, Joseph. He had a mother, Mary. And the foster father, Joseph, would give him protection. He would, they would flee into Egypt. 
They would run from Herod's troops and they would find safety under his guidance. So you and I have been given so many things. We have been given the Lord, the Savior, the God of heaven and earth as our sustenance, as our food, so that we can finally learn what love is, that we can finally love. On this, the Feast of the Epiphany, let us recognize the gift that we have been given and treasure it with all our heart. Let us look to Mary to learn exactly how to love him so that we can love him worthily because it is impossible to love Jesus the way he wants to be loved unless we love him through her. If we can love him as she loved him, then we will know true peace. We will become Christ of the world because we will become that kind of love that goes outside of itself and is given as a gift to others. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.